fibrous and globular proteins. Okay, so fibrous proteins. And we're going to have globular over here. Fibrous proteins are long, thin, insoluble, strong, rope-like proteins. That's what they, they are and they what they look like. I'm going to say they're rope-like. They're used for connective tissue. And they have a quaternary structure. Now, see if you can remember what that means. Now, quaternary structure means that they've got more than one polypeptide chain. And between these chains, they've got lots of internal bonding, which is the thing that makes them strong. So let's take an example. So collagen is the classics, what most of the questions are on. Okay, so we're going to draw three different polypeptide chains here. That's one polypeptide chain. It's another one. And the third one. So we've got three polypeptide chains. I'm not going to draw my bonds between them all vertical because then it will start looking a little bit like DNA. So I'm just going to draw these a little bit ad hoc over here in any sort of direction. Okay, so this is a triple helix. We've got bonds between the polypeptide chains. These are going to be strong bonds like disulfide bridges or covalent bonds. Okay, I'm going to look at some globular proteins now. So the classic example here is going to be hemoglobin. But let's look at the general features of a globular protein to begin with. So these are sort of round, compact, also quaternary structure proteins. I should really say spherical. Not perfectly spherical, but they're spherical in general shape. These are going to be soluble proteins. They have a wide variety of uses. So hemoglobin is obviously the protein in the blood that's going to carry oxygen around. Enzymes are globular proteins. We're going to look at some examples in just a moment. They also have a quaternary structure. And this allows them, because they're now spherical as opposed to being long and thin, they have an outside and they have an inside. This relates to why they're soluble. So you have the hydrophobic R groups, the chains that, the side chains basically, the hydrophobic bits that are afraid of water are going to hide on the inside. So when the protein folds up, the R groups that are of hydrophobic are going to be on the inside. And the hydrophilic R groups are going to be on the outside. And because the hydrophilic bits are on the outside, this means that it, they are going to be soluble in water. And this is good because they're going to be good for transporting stuff around in the bloodstream. The example that we want to know about for globular proteins is going to be hemoglobin. And... You don't really need to go into too much detail here, but I'm going to give you, certainly OCR students at Excel, you don't need to know quite this much detail, but let's just go with this because it's good to know. It's got four polypeptide chains. And so it's made of two alpha chains and two beta chains. And it's also got one heme group per polypeptide. So that's a total of four in total. So we're going to draw this out. Let's do our alpha first. The folding itself of these can just 
that's pretty kind of random. They're diagonally opposite the both alphas when we draw it like this. And then we have the beta chains filling in the other corners. Something like that. There's a bit of sort of interlocking. And then the heme group sort of sits in the middle of each of the polypeptide chains. Let's just label that up. So we've got the beta chain. We have our heme group. The alpha chain. And hard to draw, but on the outside, all the polypeptide R groups that are hydrophilic are going to be on the outside. So Okay, so now we're just going to look at a few other examples that you OCR students need to know. So you also need to know that this is the general. Collagen is a great example for the fibrous proteins as a whole. So keratin, in fact, I'm going to do keratin in green. So keratin, it's a structural connective tissue protein, and it's found in hair, nails, skin, and horns. Another example of a protein we need to know about is elastin. These all have a quaternary structure. They're all long and thin. They've all got lots of bonding between the polypeptide chains. Now, as the name suggests, it's long, it's stretchy, it's flexible, it's elastic. So the example here is whenever something has to return to its original shape. So you can see skin here, you deform it, and it pings back. Like that is elastin in the skin working. So we could say alveoli, they're going to stretch when you breathe in and they need to recoil to their original shape. Arteries, when they have high blood pressure, they stretch. And then when the blood pressure is low during diastole, they return to their normal shape. So any stretching and recoiling is going to be elastin. Okay, so continuing over here, I'm just going to give you OCR students a little bit of extra details. We call this heme group a prosthetic group. There's a full video on cofactors, coenzymes, and prosthetic group. It's um, FE2 plus is the prosthetic group. It's just a non-protein molecule that's required. It assists the protein in some way. So we can actually call this a conjugated protein. That's a J if I could spell. Okay, and the conjugated protein is means that it contains a non-polypeptide group. So it's got other bits. It's not purely polypeptide. In this example, the non-polypeptide group is the prosthetic group. Obviously, it could be a cofactor as well. See the video on that for full details. So other examples here. Well, enzymes. Enzymes are globular proteins. They need to be soluble. They need to move around in the bloodstream. So they also need a complex three-dimensional shape. The last bit we need to know about is insulin. Insulin is a hormone made by the beta cells in the islets of Langerhans in the pancreas. There's, again, there's a full lesson on that. What you need to know is that it's two polypeptide chains joined by a single disulfide bridge. 